Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you my custom water block that I made for my computer. So let's go. All right, now this is the exact same model that I use for my motherboard in my gaming computer. Now, as you can see here, there is a heat sink. Now that heat sink cools down the north bridge which is underneath this section here and also cools the MOSFET transistors that are underneath this side of the heatsink. Now, now if I take you back to last year when I actually put together this water cooling setup, I installed the full custom water cooling loop. Now, when I did that, one of the things that I didn't realize at the time was the heatsink that actually cools the north bridge and those transistors requires some type of airflow to be pushed over those fins of the heatsink to dissipate the heat. Now the problem was is that when you install a water cooling loop into that setup, there's no airflow that actually dissipates the heat. So therefore they heat up, which was causing my computer to crash. Now it wasn't so bad at the start, but as time went on and there was a bit of dust that built up and it then became worse and worse over time and it got to the point where I couldn't even game or do any editing because the computer kept crashing and I had to basically turn off CPU cores to make sure that it would actually work. So that's why we're going to now replace that heatsink with a custom water block that I made and then we'll do a before and after of the results. All right, so the first thing we did was unscrew the screws on the heatsink. Now there's also two more screws on the back where the north bridge is. And once that's done, you can basically pull the heatsink off. Now there is a bit of glue holding the north bridge uh, part on so you have to be careful just to you know slowly peel it off uh, and then it'll come off uh, all in one piece which then exposes the north bridge chip and also those transistors on the board now the thing you want to do is make sure you clean those transistors and the north bridge chip now when you're doing that, you want to make sure you're using that uh, rubbing alcohol, you know, that, that way you're not leaving any residue or uh, putting anything else on the board that you don't want. And it'll clean off all those uh, transistors nice and neat. As for the north bridge, you do the same thing just to clean it, but you just want to spend a bit more time to try and get that adhesive or that glue off. Um, it does tend to stick a bit now. It'll just take some time. You may need to use some uh, plastic tweezers or something to peel some of it off if you can. If you do have them, you probably don't want to use metal tweezers because it may scratch or damage something on the north bridge. But just take your time and you'll get it all off eventually. Now that the board's clean, I'm going to show you the north bridge uh heat sink that I'm going to use or the water block I should say now I got this off eBay it was quite cheap so I know it's probably not the correct size for my north bridge but it's quite close and we're really only getting the surface of that chip that's going to be touching the heat sink as for the transistors I've got a similar water block off eBay which is a longer one it does sit over the top of it, but it's not long enough to cover all the transistors. So what we're going to have to do is fabricate something up so that the copper will be able to transfer heat from the transistors up into that heat block or the water block. And then basically it can then extract all the heat. So to do this, I'm starting off with a copper bar, which fits in over those transistors fine now it was just a bit long so i had to cut it down to the length that i needed i then drilled out some holes for where it would attach to the motherboard once i did the pilot holes i then used a bigger drill bit to drill them out to the right size and there you can see it lines up with the old heatsink then rounded off the edges just to make them nice and neat I then used sandpaper just to rub it all down and I went through a couple different grits so I, as I got down it got really uh, I guess nice and shiny and flush. I then used this gumption stuff which is just like a uh, 
a brasso type of material that is really fine, uh, I guess, grit and pulls off any of the dirt or any of those real fine scratches. So it actually made it come up nice and flush, as you can see here. This is uh, sitting on top of the motherboard, and then we'd have the water block that would then sit on top of that. When I was trying to work out how to mount the water block on top, I actually realized I needed to put a couple more holes there, so I've drilled those out. That allows for me to run some screws up through and then I can screw down the water block onto those screws, as you'll see once I actually set it up. First, I used the original screws, which actually held the copper bar down into the motherboard. So that's exactly the same spot as before. And then I can slot the water block on top of that and then screw it down, as you can see. So the heat will then transfer up into that copper plate or the bar and then it'll transfer up into the water block and go into the loop and cool down all of those transistors. So here's a bit of a before and after uh, from the original heatsink to the two new water blocks. So one other thing I'll just add is that this was on the uh, second motherboard that I had, the spare one. So when I transferred it across to the actual gaming computer I made sure I used the thermal conductive silicon pad stuff that was actually what took the longest to do on this build was to actually wait for that to come in the mail so so first off I drained the system did the switch across of the motherboards and then attached everything up did all the tubing and then I was able to refill it with water again so what I did was a before and after and both cases I did the exact same test. I was rendering a video so it used all the cores of the CPU and basically I just ran it and actually reset it again once it had finished just to make sure to maximize out the temperature as much as possible. And what you can see is the before on the motherboard which had the heatsink. As it got through all of those minutes you can see it just gradually uh, crept up with the temperature so and the test went for about 30 minutes it got up past that 75 you know up to 77 degrees and it just kept on going so I would expect that at some point the temperature just wouldn't be able to dissipate and it would just keep going until it crashed the computer so that's the before now let's look at the after which was the exact same test the same rendering video uh, same cores used so we have a exact comparison now there is a temperature difference already and as you can see from the thermal camera that temperature doesn't creep up uh, anywhere near as much as the previous heatsink now that area where the transistors are a lot cooler and you can see the heat kind of come out to the side a bit more but you need to take into account that the thermal camera is showing the heat temperatures as its range so where the red or the white is is the maximum at 54 so if you compared it to before it's not locked at the same temperature so side by side the timings are the exact same what you're actually seeing is that over where those transistors are it's a lot cooler and the same amount of heat still spreading out so where it says 53 degrees on one side and 48 on the other it's going to show different colors that's why you can still see the heat in the power supply down in the bottom uh, left of each of those thermal cameras so it actually does dissipate a lot of heat uh, you just kind of have to take into account uh, how the actual thermal camera is picking it up and showing you I guess it's best to see that as the temperature gets up to around that 20 to 30 minute mark, you're actually seeing the overall temperature difference if you look at the maximum temperature in the top corner. So overall, it actually dissipates a lot more heat than before. And even the tests going forward from how long I can actually run the computer until it crashes, it actually lasts a lot longer. So as an overall, the temperature is down quite a bit now. Uh, at least about 20 degrees at the maximum type of uh, performance. Now, I'm quite happy even though it's a bit of a uh, put together solution. It has worked quite well. Now, the same heat is still coming out the side. It's probably reduced a lot more. But as you can see, over where those transistors are, a lot cooler, 
I'm not going to have any issues with crashing now. Assuming that you have all the other components like the fittings and the hoses, this basically would have cost me under $50. So I'm quite happy with that. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Now, if you did, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more projects like this. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.